continuing on with um, objects and character, I've got um, a, uh, a broken column here, and uh, it's kind of interesting in and of itself. So let's uh, let's work on that and uh, figure out what we can do here. So I'm gonna draw this kind of big, I think. Um, make the base of the column like about here. And the bottom of the column is kind of this donut, more or less. And then within that, there's a little conical structure that kind of flares and goes up. And then flares out to another kind of donut. And then the column proper starts about about here. And then if the column were complete, or at least partially complete, kind of end in something up here. Um, so what I can do from here is just kind of like check some distances, make sure that I'm kind of like okay-ish here. I'll probably have to like come in a little bit, maybe here, and refine some contour action. Um, so one thing that I want to do is take this sort of this donut and make sure that it comes down and overlaps a little bit. Now we're coming around and we're doing the same thing on the other side, getting some overlap action, help us create some depth. And that we're kind of bringing that overlap this direction too, to make the donut sort of reasonable. Bring that all the way around because this is going to kind of get masked into shadow. And then this is going to have kind of a lip here. This is going to get masked into shadow. Right. So then work on this donut back here. Start with the overlap. Bring it to the front. And then I'm going to kind of widen the line and make it soft because this is just going to mass into shadow out in the front. And then get the overlap at the top and the sides going. It would be easy with the donut when you get to the side to just do this thing and to kind of, you know, begin your mass around here. But you can also do this thing where you can kind of draw the top a little bit and let it convert to mass and then, um, come out and get the side so you create this little this little bit of overlap and that kind of helps you create a little bit of depth with it come around boom there we go now the fun part of this is going to be the columns so these columns are fluted meaning that if you look down onto the top of the column that every so often there's a little like scallop thing evenly all the way around, right? It goes like that. So what we want to do is be able to translate that into our column here. So um, this column does in fact have a like kind of a harsh line and what I can do is kind of establish the lines first and then get the scallops in second. So I'm going to be kind of faint with these lines and I'm going to um, kind of anchor my distance here 
and I'm going to keep that distance basically the same for anything that's kind of roughly in the middle, right? But when I start to get out to the side, um, this distance is going to get smaller and smaller, right? So I'm going to take that distance, which is pretty big, and I'm going to make sure that it's smaller. So I'm going to take it and maybe make a distance like that, right? I'm going to use a similar distance, maybe even smaller over here. For that. And that's probably going to be it for that side. And then I can make a really small distance here. And what I have to do when I get to here is because this is about the same as this, I just have to make sure that this distance right here is bigger than this distance over here. So I can do a quick scallop like that on that distance. Now the top of this is cracked, so I'm not going to finish off the top, but I can go into the bottom and then begin to work on the scallops themselves. And what I can do is do these curves first. When you get out to the edge, like over here you can see the whole scallop, but over here this edge kind of interrupts the scallop a little bit. So there's this little subtle overlap, and I would want to pick up on that um, for sure. And then to complete the scallops, I just want to go back and connect them all together with a little bit of scallop this way. And then what I have to do is to really get these finished off is find any contour and swell out here. There's a little bit of swell. And then because this isn't like a perfect line, because the scallop doesn't meet at a point like this, right? The scallop goes and turns a little bit and then scallops and then turns and then scallops. What I want to do is just separate this a little bit to kind of create a wider edge. And these are kind of just reminders for later when I develop these more. Okay, so we're working our way up to the more interesting part, which is where it cracks. Um, I have a crack that happens right about here. The crack actually happens like on this scallop. So what I want to do is kind of just maybe move it over a little bit and start the crack about here. And so what I'm going to try to do is use this, this crack to emphasize the form of the scallop here. And I want to use it in such a way that, um, that it says something more about the object and more about the form. And then What's cool is it kind of peaks up here with this scallop here. So the outer edge of the scallop kind of gets a little bit of point, gets pointy. And then it kind of comes down really quickly. And then scallops here. And then you can kind of see the scallop around there. And then, boom. And then what I may need to do is bring this up a little bit higher, this like shard so that I get some overlap here because I want it to I want that overlap to happen I have to bring it up really high to get that so I can move this as necessary right and actually in moving it I've just kind of created a face that you can just see so that works out happy accident and then I can take these scallops and kind of run them back in space. And then I can get this crack to kind of come down and meet up here, right? So now what I have to do, now that we've got kind of the outer contour of the crack, is I have to do this and create the inside of the crack because this is like a hollow column even if this were like um like a roman column or whatever like um roman columns were basically the scallop structure which they would plaster out because 
carving it was like a pain and expensive. And then inside it, right, they were, it was all bricked out. So there'd be like this brick structure inside, which is kind of cool. So like if I wanted to really get elaborate with this, I would just use this face and then inside it, I would do like this curved brick structure. I still might do that. It might be, might be kind of fascinating. So I'll kind of just work on the front and get this working. So right around the center, this kind of comes over and overlaps. So I can't really see much of the, the crack structure um, and dimension past there. And then when I get here, I can see it again, right? And it cracks along like this, comes out, overlaps, and then I can see a little bit of it here, right? And then I'm gonna stop here, and then maybe I'll try this brick structure thing. So the brick structure is just gonna go along with these um, ellipses, and I'm gonna bring that in. I'm gonna have a little bit of plaster that I can see here, right? So this is going to be my brick column. What I'm going to do is create some ellipses coming down, or partial ellipses, that are going to be like the approximate size of what a brick would be on this object if it were actually there. So this is getting into inventive drawing. Basically taking stuff that exists and embellishing or drawing out of your head. So I have a, a, a plan like an overhead plan that I know, and now I can just kind of elaborate on it and make it make it better and more interesting. So what I can do is I want to get a brick line here, right? And I want these to have some thickness because bricks have mortar and everybody usually draws bricks like this, right? And so on, but that's not really how bricks work. I mean, you can kind of approximate brick texture that way, but really what a brick is, is it's a brick and then there's a space in between all the other bricks. And most people use these lines to represent the space, but it's more interesting if you go about it the other way. So I wanna be sure that there's a space here that you can see that creates a little bit of overlap, right? And that means that there's gonna be a space about here, right? And I'm probably just not going to see one over here. It's going to overlap this brick. There'll be another space here. And I'll get a space directly above that. And one right about here. And I might get one like right here. as I go around. Okay, and then I'll get one here, directly over. I'll probably get one like right here. And so on. Anyway, so now I have a like a dual structure thing going on and it's getting already pretty interesting. Um, so what I want to do is go back and start um, another pass of refining. And this pass, you know, I'm probably going to mix in some different contours and I'm going to mix in some masses. And when I mix in, like when I start to mix in value, I want to remind myself of what my values are. I've got um, for a simple layout, it's good to do just like four, like three is a minimum. Um, white of the page is your given your, and you want to get your dark, your sort of like white, black, light gray, dark gray, real simple. So, I mean, obviously this is blue, it's not black, but just go to the darkest that you can get with your material, right? Remind yourself of how dark that is. Okay. And then as best as possible, you want to go to a light gray and a dark gray. And it would be really cool if each of these had the same distance, right? And 
in terms of how far apart those values are. So that's like, okay, this maybe could be a little bit lighter, um, note to self, right? Maybe it could be like that and still be successful. So I can kind of keep that in mind. And eventually what I do in the next stage is insert like half tones and stuff. So most likely this is all going to be white. The bricks are going to be dark. I'm kind of making up the bricks um, as I go along and um, we'll go from there. So I can start with the object, like what I know I need to do, which is like create masses, like to get the dimension of this guy. Right. So I can start here. I'm not going to differentiate much in terms of like um, shadow cores or reflected light initially, um, but just get a start going. And then this has a lot of mass down here to kind of create that internal like concavity there. Then it goes convex. And that's where the shadow core is going to wind up being, right about here. Cool. And then I can do the same sort of thing with these flutes. Come on the side of the flute, insert that, and so on. So on this, because it's white, um, I'm going to kind of stay within like this range here. And then when I get into the brick, I'm going to like open up the value range, and I'll probably use have to use the whole thing, right? Um, except for down here, there's going to be some like some super darks, like to kind of get that to work. And then if the object's not working in this range, I can kind of probably sneak and expand and like grab some darker values for that. Um, anyway, returning to it, I got to bring, be sure to bring those flutes all the way up. And I want to refer back to the value charts that I made as I set this up to be sure that I'm getting dark enough as I go through. And then here, this one's subtle. On both sides. Okay, so there we go. Set up a little basic value structure for the uh, the column itself. Now getting to the bricks, like the bricks will need a little bit of like refinement before I really get into like massing value. Um, and I'll need to do some like textural work. So first off, like I want to make the bricks interesting, you know, like a square brick is like, is ridiculously boring. Um, but if I like take that brick and like round off a little bit of it and kind of make it like a little more like it's been fired in clay, change the contour, that'll make things way more interesting. So I go through and if I start like making little chunks in the brick or like a little bit of damage inside of it, changing the contour, making it more interesting, making it more curved. Like these are really handmade kind of things. And I can go and I can start that with just, you know, going with the natural like sort of mistakes that I've made um, in terms of like not drawing perfect lines. I can roll with that. And like, if you really wanted to get nuts with it, then you could like, you could do all kinds of crazy stuff. Like you get textures like inside the bricks and so on and go crazy. But I think the main thing that will get noticed is like the contour. So when you get to the outside, right, you want to be sure that the mortar kind of like goes in a little bit and that the brick, um, you know, projects outwards, the brick itself, right? So we're breaking up the contour 
significantly by the time you get here. And like if you had more room in the page, you could just like continue it up the page or whatever. It doesn't matter. And so on. And remember to break up the contour, get the brick out a little bit. So that that looks more interesting. Okay, cool. So now what I do is I'm going to say like the bricks probably need to be like this value. So I need to go through to the bricks and overall go ahead and make them dark so that they stand out as a distinct thing from the rest of the column. Now I'm going to lose this edge a little bit because the value of this is like really pretty close to that. That's okay. Can uh, do some stuff later to fix it. Now this first attempt isn't super close. I need to get it a little bit darker. Right? The thing that always happens to me is like when I start masking it out, I don't assign close enough to what these values are. So like I'm really trying to focus on that in my drawing is like when I go to like laying out these tones in a sketch, I don't want to lay them out like too light. Go directly to the to the level of darkness that they need to be. So I've already spent a long time like laying out where they should go. So now I just have to like, you know, go right to it. I think, you know, there's value in like like fussing and sneaking up on val on on like the correct value, um, but when we're doing like these kind of uh, sketches, I think you know it's fine to just go for it in the interest of time, you know. If I do this correctly, what I can come back and do is I can make the mortar that color. And that's going to basically cover up all of the construction lines that I've done and um, just completely eliminate the need for an eraser. This one got a little boring, right? So I need to like come back and change that some. Right. That's one of the things you can do with this is like as you go through, you can reobserve and continue to make changes. So following this kind of process, it's like pretty easy to recover from any any kind of like mistake that a perceived mistake you think you've made. So there I had the tip of this like intersecting with the top of the brick. So I went ahead and changed that because that wasn't going to be fun. So another way to do this is if I had an, a more erasable material, I could go in, mask this whole thing in, and then just erase the lines back. But that's OK. We're still moving fairly quickly through this. So anyway, there are going to be more bricks up there. But now I can go back and I can take this value and assign that 
assign that to the mortar. I mean, I've already got that value there for the most part anyway, but it's just going to soften the contrast and make this like sit back in space where it should go. And in fact, all of the construction work I did kind of is at that value anyway. So it's just going to work out kind of perfectly. Boom, there we go. Now I've created like a whole value contrast thing, this brick structure, and this whole thing is just like totally made up or whatever. But I mean, it's, it's like based on, on sort of real things. And now I can do some things to clean up. I can go back with like line if I want, and I can use like different kinds of line, um, different weights of line to kind of make things happen. So like I can do some line weight here to kind of get this scallop thing working bring these scallops back. I can bring that point up here, create that overlap that comes down there. Boom. And if I need to, I can kind of like change some value here and create a value transition to emphasize. And then to differentiate too, I can kind of like create some contour here. There we go. And I can do the same thing over here, run that all the way up. And so this kind of helps with a little bit of the clarity too. And then I can throw some tone mass down to help define those. So there you go. A uh, little scalloped broken column with a made up like brick structure. And then, you know, if I really want to get nitpicky, I can, I can come down and I can push this down into the, to the super dark values, right? Cause this is super dark. My total absence of light is right down here. Right, I can kind of just fade that out into some tone here. I can bump up my reflected light here, go down another step into this into this tone, push real hard, go directly to it. Then I can do the same thing here. Get my reflected light really going here, and that's going to build the dimension. And then if I really want, I can get super soft and kind of do a nice transition there. Do something similar here. Make that transition back out. Cool. There it is.